Welcome to the finals of GP Madrid. The format is Magic Origins Limited, and here are our finalists. After a long, hard slog, Alexa Tellerov and Francesco Giorgio, the only Wizards remaining. Riley Knight in the booth, a long time. Maze, Zadelkai, and Eduardo Sajgalik. It's been great to have your company throughout this weekend. We are already off to the races. Look at this. Uh, cards flying thick and fast. A cleric of the forward order and already a uh, stalwart Aven being dispatched, at least temporarily, by an anchor to the ether. Blue-white, blue-green. This is what we've all here that we've come to see. And, uh, yeah, stalwart Aven from Francesco Giorgio, but I think Francesco has a trump card, and for this matchup, he has a Kithian's Irregulars in his hand. Oh, wow. Uh, I mean, on top of, like, having the Sentinels of the Eternal Watch, uh, potentially for the late game, uh, the blue-green deck of Alexa removal is claustrophobia that doesn't usually deal very well with either of those cards hmm. here we see four mana tapping and it looks as though it's going to be the irregulars no this time it's just the hill giant uh, <laughs> that buffs up the team and here we have uh, Amprin Tactician and that uh, Thopter being very aggressively slammed down the I, way there. I love how Alexa plays it's he's just so straightforward he wastes no time and he's being quite expressive about uh, about his plays and Hey, I just really like the, the way he's going about things. Giorgio playing with a lot of confidence as well. You can uh, see here getting in with the Cleric as well as the Amprin Tactician. Yeah, and it's quite interesting here uh, as to the block because Alexa's life total is quite low. Uh, he is looking to uh, essentially get some creatures in the bin to get that Scav Goliath down the line. Yeah, uh, quick and shrouding missed there. And Kithian's the regular. No cards in hand. Don't need them. Don't need him, so he says. Here we go. Lay him out on the table. And this is what we've got. Eduardo, we've already seen this weekend. Kithian's Irregulars completely take over a game. Your expectation moving forward in this match, it's going to be uh, pretty decisive here. Yeah, and if uh, Francesco can draw another planes, it's, as you said, so you can activate it twice. <laughs> and as I said, Alexa Tellerov doesn't hesitate. Well, can't beat this board. Let's go to game two. The writing <laughs> is on the wall there for Tellerov, and he decides he's not going to waste anyone's time. That is that. All done <laughs> and dusted for game number one. Alexa Tellerov. Packing him up like there's no tomorrow. No, He's he, got places to be. It yeah. he, he just wants to celebrate his uh, getting to the finals, qualifying for uh, for the Pro Tour in Atlanta. And uh, look <laughs> at the smile on Francesco <laughs> Giorgio's face. He can't believe it. That's an absolute freebie. That's just landed on his doorstep, opening up inside. Uh, yeah, sure, I'll take it. I'll win. No worries. Yeah, but I mean, Francesco Giorgio's board was basically unbeatable at that point. With the Kithian's Irregulars being able to tap down a creature, the only dead draw in Francesco's deck was an island. More <laughs> planes would mean more tapping. Yeah. So it's yeah, just trying to come back from that just did not seem possible. <laughs> and just talking Luke to his friends is like having yeah, a just crushed him. <laughs> he can't yeah. believe his luck. That's exactly right. Absolutely no uh, uncertain terms there. And we've got the trophy that's just been. Uh, Delivered to the table, a, a sly glance at it from the face of Alexa Tellerov. These guys hitting their sideboards here, and Francesco Giorgio is still <laughs> stunned. He can't believe it. Tellerov, the way he plays, though, this really is a, a part of part of the whole package here. It's in, it's uh, forward, uh, it's aggressive, it's it's um, it's intimidating to many players as well. He has a confidence that really puts people uh, in their place. Yeah, exactly. Because the way he plays, it seems like he always knows what's up. Mm. Like. When your his opponent plays a one man one mana trick, he always plays like he expected it, so he knows what's going to happen. Yeah, there's a lot to be said for this, Eduardo. I think about uh, getting on the front foot, not only uh, uh, technically in the game, but also making sure that your opponent knows that you're in command. You're you're the one who's driving this one. Yeah, exactly. And I I mean he's setting the pace of play, right? And one of the popular things what you can do when you're playing that fast and setting the play is you're forcing sometimes your opponent to be a little hasty, hastier than they want, but Alexa takes his time when it matters. When he had to sideboard, it took five minutes. So when it matters, he takes his time, and when in his view it doesn't, as you can see, the Fopters go flying. And these two obviously having a, a jocular conversation about what's going on at the, uh, the table, a short and jocular little uh, interaction about uh, how that uh, first uh, game went, but I'm sure Giorgio, he's, he's all smiles. He's, he's got to be happy about being 1-0 up in the finals of a oh, GP. Oh, definitely. I think one thing I want to point out, which is I think very interesting, is the fact that throughout g day one, we have barely seen any blue decks. Then, of course, during draft, you'll see more. But at the end of the day, the finals are again between two blue decks. This is actually a, a very interesting point and something I wanted to raise as well because we've, we've been arguing back and forth throughout this weekend about the best color, and blue has not been in that conversation. No, no. not at all. Not at all. But, you know, at the same time, blue has Whirler Rogue. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's an argument. Okay, sure. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, no, no, but it has Sentinel of the Eternal Watch. But at the same time, Alexa, what he's done with blue is he ha he is playing weak cards in the uh, in a vacuum like Screeching Scab. Mm. Not a great card, but it's a two-drop. And, you know, if it's stopping a Topin Freeblade, that's good enough. 
This is the lesson that really has been uh, has been uh, hammered home time and time again throughout this entire weekend. This format, we went into this with unanswered questions. Matei, we were talking about the things that have remained unsolved in Magic Origins, and you characterised this format about being based around two drops. I imagine your assessment hasn't changed. Not at all. No, I still think the tempo-based decks are the best. As we've seen, so many mulligans and slow draws by punished by a nice curve from, from one of the players. We've seen... Uh, player mulligan into five and easily winning because he just was able to curve out against an opponent who was just lacking one color of mana and never could recover and it, it hasn't been the only match we've seen the uh, seen that happen in yeah no exactly stumbles missing that land drop missing that two drop almost always punished yeah uh, especially there are so many swinging cards in this format something like wild instinct not only kills your creatures if a creature if you're behind but also deals a lot of damage and that has been one of the cards that has been performing really well this weekend the critical uh, importance of an early start really p plays uh, without a turn one or turn two play mm. falls so far, far behind. This isn't a, this isn't a format where you can sort of sit in your haunches and, and wait for the game to come to you. You have to you have to grab the ball by the horns and really get in there. Yeah, yeah. I agree. And like the way you said it, like one drops are usually not played in limited, but bonded construct. I've seen that card more in play than I think I ever could have. Yeah, and I, I, w I was saying that from the start of day one. Like, mm. I like Bonded Construct. I think it has a place, so I'm, I'm happy to have been proven right and uh, people like that card. Let's have a look at these opening hands here. I can see a couple of lands, a couple of spells for Tellerov. I think, he might, uh, think he might be on top of that hand. That seems decent. Uh, Giorgio also happy with his seven. So here we go, potentially the final game in the final match of GP Madrid. Opening st things up <laughs> with a screeching scab entering the battlefield almost before the land used to pay for it did. Yep, Cleric of the Ford Order, gaining two life for Francesco, helping him make sure that he's always ahead in the race. Yeah, that, no uh, Consul's Lieutenant from Francesco, which we know he, he has two of. Uh, yeah, but Force Mage uh, helping to uh, put Francesco back to 18 where he belongs in uh, Alexa's eyes. Yeah, good amount of value getting uh, uh, the Teller I've got off the Force Mage there. Force Mage, an unimpressive card, but still one that serves a, a real purpose. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, uh, again, that Kithian's Irregulars that we've been talking about so much, I think it's lurking somewhere in Francesco's hand. Is that the case? Oh, my goodness, I got a little glimpse of it just there as well. Well, that's going to be... that. Ki well, I mean, Alexa Tellerov apparently running scared from the card, so we'll see what happens when it uh, enters the battlefield this time around. Scrapskin Drake, the player here. Yeah, Francesco also has uh, a Swift Reckoning in his hand, so that's somewhat of a small combo in itself here. Uh, but we'll see how he does against an Aspiring Aeronaut here. Another cleric of the forward order, but it looks like it, it's uh, the play is really the irregulars here. Yeah, already three planes. So. Yeah. Oh no, he's no. going for the okay. cleric. Yeah, I mean, even the two free blanking completely the aeronauts here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and the and the cleric making sure that the two one it could trade with the two one as well. Make sure that uh, Francesco stays ahead and l has time for the irregulars to really take over the game. After oh. trading off their Tellerov with no follow up play, he's holding a vastwood gorger, a claustrophobia and a land. Now, before we characterize the claustrophobia as not the ideal removal spell for the Irregulars, Matei. Uh, yeah, uh, but it's still going to keep tapping even though, even if it gets claustrophobia, but uh, now Alexa will be able to play a Vastwood Gorger, but not going to do much blocking against four planes already, as well as we know about the Swift Reckoning. Yeah. LSV characterized Kithian's Irregulars ability as saying, if you ever activate it twice in a turn, you more or less should win that game. And uh, we saw Tellerov a ver with a very speedy concession. And look at this, the one-two punch. <laughs> Tap into, uh, into Swift Reckoning here, and in come the Irregulars, as well as the Scrapskin Drake. This is not looking good for Tellerov. Yeah. Uh, and he also has its open free play to, uh, to uh, follow it up with. Wow, a huge turn there, using his matter really efficiently and keeping Tellerov's board clear. And Tellerov really... Needing to find some tools here, and uh, well, <laughs> Alchemist Vile is a uh, is a start. Yeah, knowing Alexa, he might just concede after after <laughs> drawing a card here from the Alchemist Vile, but I, uh, we know he won't uh, just yet. But yeah, it's gonna get rid of that one. He has the aerial volley for the Scrapskin Drake, uh, and uh, will be able to double block the Topen Free Blade. So if 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 he ever gets the chance, if, he, if he's allowed to, if Francesco allows him to. Yeah, I think the chances of that free blade getting in a, uh, uh, higher than they would be otherwise in this uh, particular board state. The Irregulars, once again, locking up the uh, the game in a big way. We're going to see an aerial volley take care of Scrapskin Drake here. Yeah, that no instance from Francesco. Plays another planes, how convenient. Yeah, so now like any any planes is still a live draw and tap. I mean, he, Alexa only has two creatures to be fair right yeah. now, but oh, there's the third one. It's fine. 
Uh, not tapping at the end of the turn by Francesco it was certainly strange. He could have tapped the Disciple and one more creature and getting with the Topen Free Blade. Well, that choosing to just say go, here comes the Farika's Disciple, and Giorgio's going to take it, drop down to 16. This is very unusual. Uh, I, I wonder... Yeah, like, Francesco not acting in the Irregulars is... Well, I mean, he went from having a chance to uh, come back into this game, but yeah, I believe... Kiffian's Irregulars is just white wipe tap target creature. It doesn't have to tap it to it doesn't it doesn't have to be untapped. There's no other requirement other than two white mana. Yeah. And Alexis just going for the throat. He's just like, okay, if you if you don't know how and Francesco packs it up. He's gonna concede. Francesco Giorgio conceding game number two with a a a, a, a Kithian's Irregulars. I am stunned. I wow, this is, he, I, I think he just thought it's uh, an effect like suppression bonds. He must have thought it, it turned off the deactivated ability. Obviously some wow. switch has flicked in his brain and he wasn't able to uh, to sort of piece it together that the Irregulars was still a very, very relevant card on that battlefield. That was incredible. Like it means like Alexa now has a chance to win this Grand Prix. Yeah. And now he also knows if he plays Colostophobia, Francesco's going to believe it doesn't work. Well, I tell you what, we've embarrassed ourselves because we initially said that Colostophobia is not a very good answer to <laughs> Kithian's Irregulars, and all of a sudden we have been proven very, very wrong by that. Alexa Teller of really not giving away at the, the tiniest of edges here. He's playing, he's in it to win it 100%, got to, got to get in there, and uh, he's done really well to win a game he had no business winning. <laughs> Certainly not, no. I mean, Francesco did not have much going on there. I mean, he could have had a 3 3 token free blade, and sure, a Kithian is irregular, tapping down two Farika's disciples each turn, uh, but it, he was drawing a lot of lands, and uh, Alexa was drawing a lot of business, so it, the game wasn't decided just that. It's not like uh, Francesco completely threw the game away. However, I think he could have gotten himself in position to win. Yeah, I, I love the psychological game that, uh, that Tellerov's playing here. An early concession, sort of, s again, as you said, Eduardo, setting the pace of play. Ah, the game's over. I won't waste your time. I'll pack it up. And maybe that's stuck in Giorgio's mind. Maybe he's looked at that and gone, oh, okay, well, I've got to do the same thing. If the game's over, I'll, I'll mm. scoop him up. Yeah, interesting. And, and as you said, Matei, like, it's true that Ale Alexa was going to develop his ward and probably was going to get through the Irregulars, but it would have still bought him a lot of time. So, mm. I mean, yeah, and uh, yeah, and Riley, you're completely right on the the, the, ma the mind games here are, are, are strong with this one. Absolutely, very real. Yeah, and uh, you can see the demeanor of Alexa changing from game one where, oh, I have no shot, ha, 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 you crushed me, into like super serious. Yeah, all business, all day. Whew. He's like, he's seen the window because he probably felt, oh, I can't actually beat this card. Wait. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I just love uh, to see Alexa play. He's just so, so solid. It's, it's great to see and he's great for the camera. So, uh, as you uh, a brief welcome back to the booth, you can see our handsome faces here as these guys uh, shuffle up and sideboard. But what a pleasure it's been to bring uh, Magic Origins to uh, to the viewers around the world. A, a, a format, as we said, that's still asking questions and still full of all sorts of surprises. Oh, definitely. Uh, one, of my, one of the best surprises I've seen all day was a deck with six claustrophobias. Yeah. Which <laughs> meant that it was actually the most cast card on camera, I think. I, 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 meant I wanted in the feature material and saw four, and I'm like, wow, this guy is really having a laugh here. And then Neil's like, no, no, no. There are two more. Yeah. I just couldn't believe that. Unbelievable. We saw people drawing cards of fairy miscreants as well. That was uh, a big feature. There. And <laughs> Very unusual for you, right? Highly <laughs> unusual indeed. And, uh, of course, uh, Angel's Tomb and some of the other cards. Warhorn, these utility cards. Bonded Construct. Artifacts playing mm -hmm. a big role across both Sealed and Draft. Yeah, they, they just uh, round up your deck very nicely, and they can actually really help you uh, progress. Like Bonded Construct, either as a early drop to protect you against a two drop from other yeah. players or as we saw one player went turn to two drop turn three two drop one drop which was a one bonnet construct next turn removal spell get swing. in there yeah, yeah that can do it we've seen all sorts of things the yoke docks has got in for <laughs> a couple of points of damage I, as well i, yeah, oh, I saw oh. double yoke docks oh, oh yeah but yeah. but that ac yeah and that act of treason taking a yoke docks with infernal scurrying <laughs> drawing its controller that card. was huge we've had all sorts of huge plays but it all comes down to this the final game ladies and gentlemen in the final match of GP Madrid. You've stuck with us for a long time. We'd like to thank you for your company here throughout this fantastic weekend of Magic, but it all comes down to one final game. Alexa Tellerov consulting with his group. I can see some lands and some spells, but he's going to keep... Oh, and the forest is a great draw there. Wow, really getting himself out of the woods. And I think Francesco has a consul lieutenant, but doesn't have the second white just yet, so 
So it'll be interesting. Clash oh, of wow. Wills. That's going to be huge there. Getting rid of the Leaf Gilder because Telerog oh. with a shaky seven, drawing the forest and then having his Gilder counted. That means that we're not going to see an accelerated four drop. That means that it's Alchemist File for him on turn yeah, three. There was no constant attempt, but there's an aspiring Iron yeah. on turn four for Francesco Giorgio. Let's see what Alexa has here because I think I see Anchor to the Ether and the Claustrophobia. Maybe one more card that I we don't get to see just yet. I think he might be holding onto a Ring Warden Owl at the back there. Yeah, okay. the, the Leaf Gilder being countered, meaning that he can't slam the Owl this turn. Yeah. And interestingly, Lee, though, if Francesco has access to... Uh, sorry, if Alexa has access to a Claustrophobia, Francesco has a spicy card from his sideboard in Enlightened Ascetic in his hand. Ah, uh, that's going to be a good one. It's going to free up his Kithian's Regular so he can start using the ability again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a Ring Warden uh, out there for, for Alexa here, so that's that should stop the attack. And Francesco Giorgio has a lot of lands in his hand and not much to develop his board further, unlike Alexa, who now has also an uh, Artificer's Epiphany drawing two cards here. That's handy. That's going to uh, knock the Ring Warden Owl up into Sarah Angel territory, turning it into a 4-4 flyer. In addition to drawing him two cards, he doesn't have to discard, of course, with that artifact. Yeah, I mean, Alexa seems to have a lot more gasoline in his hang than Francesco at this time. Uh, but, yeah... D W although Francesco does have a knightly valor, I believe, so we'll see how this develops. A f nearly full grip for Telerov, though. He's, si he's sitting pretty with this Ring Warden now, threatening to, uh, to smash in for a fair chunk of damage. And as you mentioned, uh, a lot more going on on the left-hand side of your screen here. Yeah. Uh, whoa. Okay, looks like Francesco Giorgio leaving maybe to consult with a judge here. Interestingly enough. Let's see, let's see then... Uh, what he wants to ask the judge about because I think he has knightly valor and disperse in his hand. Haven't seen much else, I don't think. But it might be a dif different card as uh, we see it at the just behind our text coverage colleague Oliver Gehrman. Uh, Francesco was consulting with the head judge Alfonso del Bueno of Spain. So it looks like it's lands and the valor in addition to that disperse that you mentioned. And so all of a sudden, aspiring aeronaut uh, would deign to be. A four, a three, four flying vigilance here. Yeah, and uh, the question is here if Alexa has something to deal with it, uh, because there's a few important things here. First off, is if the knightly valor actually hits the battlefield, triggering the knights, because Francesco still has access to that disperse mm -hmm. and could either return the knightly valor or uh, the one two flyer as needed. And yeah, Alexa here seems to <laughs> <laughs> be asking a number. Okay, I think I know what this is about now because there's a Mizium Meddler in Alexa's hand, I think. So I think Francesco, where he wanted to ask how it works with Knightly Valor, yep. that uh, the Knightly Valor has been played, uh, uh, Alexa's like, okay, so how does this work then? So what's going to happen is if he redirects the Knightly Valor to the Mizium Meddler, uh, Giorgio will still get the 2-2 uh, the because, yes. of course, you're able to target your opponent's creatures with your auras, but mm. uh, it doesn't say that creature's controller. It says... When it enters the battlefield, you put a two-two. So exactly. even though uh, even though Alexa Telerov could end up controlling the card with the knightly valor attached attached to it, any way you slice it, Georgia is going to end up with the knight token. However, at the same time, if you're giving your opponent a freak six out of the deal, that's not the the greatest bargain. Uh, that's why it's good. It's a good thing that Francesco actually does have the disperse here, and uh, he can uh, return the knightly valor to his hand and then replay it next turn get another 2-2 two, two and finally get his the 3-4 three uh, three, flyer he so desires. That's huge as well because, yeah, it's not just, a, of course, it's not just a creature. He can return a non-land permanent and that means he's going to snag himself two knights if this works out. So I think uh, Telerov's in a position where, where he thinks he's got the trump, but we've got the double trump coming from Giorgio. Yeah. yeah this is actually a really fascinating back and forth here. And I love how both players ask the question one in a row. And then the other question is, Francesco could bounce the 1-4 the with Flash before Knightly Valor resolves, but I think he's better off letting it resolve, dispersing the Knightly Valor back, making sure he gets a Knight twice. That's yeah. a much better line. He doesn't lose much, but a little bit of time. And with a card like Knightly Valor, especially if it's hitting the battlefield multiple times, that's going to give you a lot of time. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, here... It's, and yeah, if you're watching at home and you've, uh, you've ever been in this position, you're not 100% sure about the interaction, yeah, always call a judge. Yeah, it's well. better to be sure... Um, and then look fantastic as a result. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, yes. the alternative where, oh, I didn't know how this, w this worked. Lose my card. Yeah. And we see that happen all the way at the top level of play. I remember at Pro Tour Brussels with Adrian Sullivan and Ari Lax. Uh, it was Adrian Sullivan who was just completely, uh, completely bamboozled by the fact that Lax was able to sequence a series of plays involving uh, exploit triggers that meant that he got uh, quite thoroughly uh, done in. He got, uh, Lax got him coming and going there. <laughs> 
Yeah, it was uh, Illusionary Gains and uh, CDC, I believe. Yeah, the CDC. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, that's an, a very interesting interaction. But uh, let's see. Uh, uh, we already have m a set of more people, and Alexa's still not at the table. There he, there he comes. So I think he's going to play the Mizzy medley. Yeah, the Mizzy there medley. we go. And I like how once he has his answer, that's good. Ah, okay. So uh, what he's going to do is the Mizzy Mid medley enters the battlefield. He changes the target to Mizzy medley, but Francesco can bounce it while it, the ability is on the stack. And there's nothing to redirect to. Ah, so the ability will, will then fizzle. Th that's, what they yeah. th that's what they were discussing. I see. Okay. So the ability of the Mizzy medley fiddle fizzles or is countered because it doesn't yeah. have any targets. So well, the uh, b Basically, there's nothing to redirect it to, to because... Yeah. Mizzy Metal is no longer on the battlefield. But yeah. I liked your line more of uh, actually bouncing the Knightly Valor because Francesco doesn't have my so line. much action. Oh, my apologies. <laughs> Matei's line. Thank of, you. Of uh, bouncing the Knightly Valor because uh, Francesco ha only has so much action mm. and this would have ended uh, better for him. And yeah, here the <laughs> brutal anchor to the E for Yeah, severely punished for not taking Matei's Alakai's line there, unfortunately, oh, sure. for Giorgio. He, he still gets another stop throughout the deal. I mean, uh, Alexa's still in pretty decent shape here if he has some sort of follow-up. Because the, the owl, owl is now a 4-4, and I wonder if Alexa has something good to play here. He keeps on top with the scry, that's important. Also have, has a vast with Gorger in his hand. So, Telerov <laughs> immediately <laughs> replaying the uh, the aspiring aeronaut here, and as you said, Garrett Grant gaining uh, himself another Thopter. Hey, kept the Farika's Disciple on top. Interestingly enough. <laughs> this is like see an attack with a Ring Warden now. now. And Giorgio, no hesitation in taking the 3 damage. Yeah, there's no, there's ah, re little reason to uh, to block here. Another ring warden now coming down here. So Telerov playing pretty hard D here, making sure he's got his uh, his shields up nice and firmly. Yeah, and this is uh, this is actually interesting. Alexa really taking command of the game with his pair of uh, of owls, and wow, that aerial volley will make sure that no combat trick from Francesco is going to get him back in the game. And also prowess on two of the owls. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be swing for a lot of damage here, especially if he can follow up with a with a vastwood gorger. Yeah, it, it might be actually correct here not to use the aerial volley, uh, simply because he, he the only way he seems to be able to lose this game is if Francesco uses a trick on one of his Fopters. But he decides to use it. I, I don't fault him for it. It's still a, a pretty nice uh, combat trick that gets rid of uh, the Aeronaut and his companion. So one of the Thopters blocking the uh, Ring Warden out there, and all of a sudden Telerov rules the skies. And here is Farika's Disciple as a follow-up play for Telerov. Yeah, and there's the Freak's Disciple still leaving up uh, the Mizzy Meddler, if I'm not mistaken, as well as having Claustrophobia. Consul's Lieutenant maybe just a little bit too late as Alex Tellerov wrestled this game into his control. Yeah, his Air Force is very, uh, uh, really not a, a, a to be trifled with here, and especially with that uh, Ether Vial proving to be a, a, an option for a falter, it should Giorgio also take to the air. Yeah, yeah he's going to kill both. He's quite, I'm pretty sure he's happy with doing that. Yeah, putting uh, Francesco Giorgio down to seven. There's a Vastwitch Gorger. Yeah, keeping so the and keeping that 1-4 up. I mean, Here we go. Giorgio's <laughs> going to have to find something special here. He checks in. It's a Cleric of the Forward Order, which I think we're going to see play. That's going to buffer him back up to nine, should he play it. But it's three It's three instead. It, it is the Cleric of the Forward Order, so up to nine here. But I think it's okay. So there's still just the Mizzy Medal, but those are the Alchemist Vials, so that's going to mean the Cleric of the Forward could not block. Yep. If there was a Kithian's Irregulars, that could would have been pretty sweet, tapping them to creatures. And there's an Enlightened Aesthetic just to get a Chump Blocker. So, buying himself one more turn with these uh, small white creatures, but uh, Telerov can smell it on the air. The victory yeah. is only a few it's moments coming. away for him. Ring Warden Owls, in they come. Yeah, Chump Block, take six, go to free, and Francesco. Very likely lethal attackers. An alchemist vial. Francesco Giorgio has one draw step to pull something from the ether here. What can he find? It's a topen free blade. That is that. Alexa wow. Telerov has crushed his enemies, driven them before him, and there is no lamentation whatsoever on the, the uh, face of the Serbian. Congratulations to the champion of GP Madrid, Alexa Telerov. Francesco Giorgio, a, a gracious in defeat. And of course, we can't uh, forget the achievements of him as well, all the way to the finals, bowing out against a very, very skilled magician indeed, Alexa Telerov. What an end to the tournament here, Matei. Yeah, I really like how Alexa played it, and I think he's a much-deserved winner. Just the style he played, the, the control he got of the, over the game slowly and uh, playing at his pace, is certainly a very worthy winner, and uh, I'm... Uh, I think the, his Serbian friends are going to be very happy that he's going to be taking the trophy to Serbia, which I think is their first, uh, first GP title. 
As we bring it back to the booth there, you saw a cheeky smile coming your way from Alexa Telleroth, our champion. But Eduardo really putting his, uh, stamping his authority on the game there. Those ring water nails, uh, making sure he's going to get there and, and, and slowly chipping away. And then before he was just able to turn it all and turn the corner. I was absolutely.